my life story and engagement with street children began when I was teaching at the Tata Institute of Social Sciences way back in 1984. I used to commute by the local trains and I used to see these children in the trains, at the platforms and railway stations. They intrigued me. I wanted to know who these children were. So one day, I stopped a child and said, I want to talk to you. He just turned around and ran for his life like as if I was some plague. So I ran after him and the people at the station seeing me running, they chased him saying, catch him, he's a thief. I said, no, he's not. And I started shouting, he's, leave him alone. And fortunately, in all that commotion and chaos, the child disappeared. But the police caught hold of me and said, what the hell are you doing? You have created a public nuisance here. I said, I'm sorry, but I didn't give up. Eventually, I met these children. And I had innumerable conversations with them over roasted peanuts, cups of sweetened chai. And they told me their stories. And their stories were really wild. Some of them were like Bollywood scripts. And I knew that everything was not the truth, but they were admirable kids. These were children with such positive spirit. They had such resilience power. They were so generous. They knew what was right and what was wrong. They had such a take on life. They were amazing children with such dignity. When I moved to Delhi, I decided I would like to work with these children. I did a study, a situational analysis of street and working children in Delhi, along with a professor from JNU, Professor Nangia. It was the first study of its kind in the country. It gave me a real insight into the lives of these children, as to who these children are and why are they here on the streets. It only deepened my interest to work with these children but I knew that my education was not done. I wanted to know what are the kind of programs we have for these children in the country. I traveled across the country, visited 11 organizations, and met 11 fascinating charismatic founders. They were such generous people. They gave me their time. They shared their knowledge. They shared their experiences, the lessons they learned. They allowed me to meet their social workers to meet the children that they worked with, and I learned, and those lessons I could never, ever get from any textbook or research document. I came back to Delhi much wiser. I founded Butterflies, an organization which is based on democratic principles. Children's voices are crucial. Children's participation is the core value and belief of butterflies. We are also a non-institutional based organization. We have a very strong street presence. We have an excellent team of street educators who go to the streets, build a relationship with the children, which is based on mutual trust, honesty, and respect. The street educators take them through formal education, support them in needs of medical emergencies or legal help, send them to the night shelters. But very early on, I realized that these children spent all their money by the end of the day. They had nothing in their pocket. So I asked them, what do you do? They said, you know, Didi, if we have money in our pocket, these bullies come and they take it away or it gets stolen. And some of these children were saving money with the shopkeeper and this unscrupulous man was charging an interest on that. At the end of the day, this poor kid had no money. The interest was more than the money he saved. So I knew that they had to be a safe place for the children to keep money. And so I started a saving scheme. But I soon realized that children were not learning to manage money. Children need to be educated in financial management, budgeting, and prioritizing needs. They also need finances as they start growing up. It was a deep concern for me that when they become teenagers and if they wanted to go for technical skill training, who would finance it? Who would give them the money? If they want to be entrepreneurs, who would loan them the money? Microfinance was the buzzword, but deep down in my heart, I knew that was not the way forward. I felt there has to be another approach. 
an approach where children are the only stakeholders, not butterflies and not any financial institutions. I hit upon this idea of a children's development bank, a cooperative banking, where children are the stakeholders. They own, manage, and are responsible for, the, for all their savings and capital. Of course, a lot of the adults thought I was crazy. They said, what are you saying? I mean, children running a bank? That's a wild idea. But there was one institute that had faith in, my, in me and in my idea, and that was National Foundation of India. They gave me 200,000 rupees to start this bank. I went with this to the children, spoke to them about the idea. They loved it. They were not doubting Thomas's. They said, are you saying that we can have a bank just like yours? We said, yes. The next question, typical of children, when are we starting it? I said, we start it when you will develop the rules for it. Who can be a member? Whom will you give an advance? Who will be your manager? So they drew up the rules and they sent the draft to me. I read the draft and my heart sank. The rules were such, no kid could become a member of this bank, neither the drafters. The rules said, if you spoke bad language, you can't be a member. If you fought and you are a bully, no way you are a, man, you are a member. If you didn't come for classes, forget it. You didn't do your homework, forget it. So I knew that this is not gonna happen. So I called them up and said, could I please come and you know, be there in your discussions? They said, sure. So I started, we had this discussion, and the children quickly realized that none of them can be a member with these you know, most unrealistic rules. So they started scoring it all off, excepting two. And one of it was that if a child is a substance user, only when he gave up that habit could he become a member. Second, a 16-year-old kid can get an advance to do business, but not a business to sell good car, pan, cigarette, BD, or any substances, or pornographic materials. What were the children doing? They were putting ethical practices when it came to business. And, and this was the starting point of CDK. This was the first children's bank in the world. The children also, as we went along, came back and said, look, Didi, this saving, saving scheme will not be enough. We need a Chalta Firta account. What they were saying is they wanted a current account too. So we had a savings account and a current account. The children said we will give advances for two things. One for welfare, where they can pay their school fees, buy their books, clothes, medicines, and development for 16-year-olds who want to start a business venture. We held a lot of training programs for children in all these things, communications, management, business plans, entrepreneurship, and it's a continuous process. But this also caught the imagination of media. We were covered extensively by everybody, and it attracted the attention of the Reserve Bank of India. So one day, two officials walked up to me and said, came to our office and said, what the hell are you all doing? And then we explained, and they were very happy with it. And they said, oh, you're teaching financial literacy. I said, yes, it's a life skill education program. They asked me to go to their regional office. I met the manager and five very high-ranking officials. They told me you're doing something which the RBI should be doing, teaching children financial literacy. But they said, you know what? You can't use three words, bank, banking, and banker. I said, what? These are words in the English dictionary. They said, sure, but you cannot use it. Get another word. And they said, we can offer you a word. And they said, kazana. And that's a very appropriate word. Kazana means treasure. But then I had to go around the South Asia talk to the children and tell them that, look, it's no more a bank now, we have to call it a kazana. Kids had no problems. The most interesting reaction I got was from the children of Bangladesh. They were so happy that we had changed the name. They said, Didi, we are so happy that we are no more children's development bank, but children's development kazana. Now nobody will confuse us with Grameen Bank. And I thought that was great because it's not a microfinancing program anyway. Now, uh, in one of our training programs, we got in a request from the general manager of HSBC for Asia Pacific region. He said he wanted to meet these children. So he came, he introduced himself, 
as the general manager of Asia Pacific region and that HSBC has 181 branches in the world. The children just looked at him, listened very carefully, and then when it was their turn to introduce, 12-year-old Omar gets up and says, I'm Omar, manager of CDK, Kabul branch, Afghanistan. We have 30 branches, but we are growing. <laughs> so, so, so that was something. That is the power of CDK. It gives power to children to dream with their eyes open and make their dreams come true. We have a number of children who are doing fantastic things, but I would like to speak about just six of them. They are Vishwanath. He is doing his article ship with a chartered accountancy firm, and he will be a chartered accountant in three years' time. I have Bilal. He is a trained modern dancer. Fantastic. He is the most successful choreographer in Delhi. There is Riaz, a successful entrepreneur. He has a shop in Delhi and, and in Gwalior repairing mobile phones. Priya, a girl from Jaipur whose parents wanted her to get married when she was young and she refused. She continues her education with taking an advance from CDK. Jayender, a, a boy from uh, Pokhara, Nepal, he did journalism. He's a reporter today in one of the local newspapers in Nepal. Binod, another kid from Chitwan, from Nepal. He has completed his high school just because he could take, get an advance for his tuition fees. Children of Sri Lanka are doing organic farming and the produce from that is sold and one portion of the profit goes into the bank. The children decided to build toilets. Now tell me, where did that proposal come from? Obviously from girls because they felt it was important we should have toilets. So that, that village has toilets. In war-torn Afghanistan, where children live such terrible lives, a, a life of insecurity and economic deprivation, children have taken loans and they have their businesses. They're continuing their education, but more importantly, they are children who are emotionally secure now. My dear friends, today in this world, we have 1.3 billion adolescents. Majority of these adolescents live in South Asia in extreme poverty. The life chances for these children is slim in this shrinking in this rapidly changing world. Unless they have access for education, technical skill training, entrepreneurship, they would be still living in poverty and illiteracy and insecurity. We need to give them that chance. We need to give them those opportunities. Children's Development Kazana is the lifeline for them. Children, it has impacted their lives. They have changed their destinies for better. We have children who have created wealth for themselves and their families and community. Thank you very much.